Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. How are we all doing today? Are y'all ready to pick up where we left off? I hope you are because I'm excited because I'm. I just want to jump back more into dating Matt. So. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. Wonder if we got any coupons today? The nice mail person slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. Takes a couple tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts. I mean, if you're busy, I can't come back. Yeah. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. I kind of do that myself, too. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And the suspension's killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. I got in. Oh, I got in. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Wait, Dad, I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. Mm. Wherever. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a burrito with a view. Can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Yes. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID, and... Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention the students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we all get professional photo editing software for free. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between the bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interest. But we're gonna be best friends. Greg and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Greg brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. <laughs> Carl ruled. Ooh, they let you have animals in the dorm if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I can forge one. I think I can get a rabbit. Maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh, boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Mm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. I want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to not get out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Uh. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle the 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. Don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I could see you dead. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Mm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person. And I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Yeah. 
<laughs> Love you, kiddo. Love you too, Paps. <laughs> Paps. Welcome. You've got dads. Hmm. You've got dads. Hmm. Hi, this is Stephen from Dadmazon. I'm out front with your delivery. Oh, okay, yes. I'll be right back. Wait, no, sorry. I need to put on pants first. Can I have a pants from wrapped from waist down in a duvet? Are you cool with that? I can come back tomorrow. No, 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 no way. Ah, uh, all right, I, 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 I found some sensible capris. Put on pants. Ooh, I got a package. Wonder what it is. Oh, I bet it's that package of socks I ordered. I open up the box and start pulling the packing peanuts out. Man, these socks reek. Okay, that's definitely not socks. It's butterflies? Oh boy, I also want to know what Amanda was planning on doing with these. Hey Amanda, your box of dead butterflies is here. What's up? Are you sacrificing them? What? You ordered butterflies? You can order dead butterflies online? Wait, so these aren't yours? Uh, no, but I'm definitely ordering some right now. Um, okay, love you. Take a look at the box again. Oh, this is dressed to Damien's house. Uh... I should take it over to him. I jog over to Damien's house with the box. I pull back his door knocker, but suddenly the door opens. <sighs> Mr. Daddy, to what do I owe the pleasure? Whoa, how did you know I was about to knock? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay, uh, anyways. I think this got delivered to my house by mistake. <clears throat> I hand him the box and his face lights up. Huh. What a wonderful surprise. I was just about to send a strongly worded letter to the courier service about this. Many thanks. I... Not to pry, but... What are you going to do with those butterflies? <sighs> Would you like to see? Alarm bells ring in my head. This is how you die, Funk Daddy. Sure. <laughs> Damien leads me into his study where he set up some sort of workstation. Above his desk is a wall of pinned butterflies, moths, and beetles. Oh, wow. That's... Really something, Damien. Huh. I'm quite proud of my little collection. You do all this yourself? <laughs> of course, I find it rather relaxing. How do you... <clears throat> it's simple. Here, let me show you. <laughs> These aren't ready quite yet, but they'll need to be rehydrated overnight, so they're easier to work with. I have some over here that are ready to pin. Damien takes a seat at his desk while I hover behind him. He picks up a little triangular paper package and snips off the edge. He pulls out an all-black butterfly and shows it to me. Oh. I'm rather excited about this one. It's a turquoise swallowtail. He gently opens the wings, spreading the butterfly out on the table. The backs of the wings are a gorgeous iridescent green color. Oh, and the pigment on this one is so nice too. Anyways, pinning a butterfly is actually very simple. It just requires a delicate touch. First, I'll put a pin through the thorax. Damien slides a pin through the middle of the butterfly and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam. He carefully arranges the antenna with forceps and begins placing paper and more pins on and around it. He does this so effortlessly, it's almost hypnotic. Oh. I have a frame here that I think this one will look quite pretty in, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple days until it is ready. And then my... Oh. I remove all the pins and put it on display with the others. Take a close look at Damien's collection. One with bright blue eyes keeps drawing my eye. This one's so pretty. Damien takes it off the wall. Hmm. Ah, yes, that's a blue morpho. One of my favorites, too. He hands the small frame to me. Huh. Yeah, I think this would look lovely in your home. Oh, I couldn't take this. Hmm, huh. <laughs> I insist. Believe me, I have more than enough. Thank you. Hmm. If you ever have an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you know where to find me. Haha, <laughs> I think I'll leave that up to you. I feel like I'd probably break them in half with my butterfingers. Oh. Nonsense, you have beautiful, steady hands. You would make a fine taxidermist. Am I blushing? Damien walks me to the door and gives me a whoop smile as I leave. Oh. Do take care of yourself, Funk. Thanks for allowing me to share my odd little hobby with you. Welcome. You've got dads. Yeah, I do. Oh, no more conversation with Dad Manda. And no conversation with Dad Mazone. Alright, let's go talk with Matt. Nothing can beat reading in print. I do agree. I prefer to read things on paper. I just have trouble reading things like on a Kindle and things like... I got one somewhere. It's over there. 
I used to have a Kindle sitting on my desk, but it's now sitting in a box over there because I have a box of random junk that I just throw stuff into. Instead of messaging the guy, why don't I just walk over and grab some coffee? I'm feeling really sluggish today anyway. Amanda! Amanda sticks her head out of her room. Father! Wanna go to the coffee spoon? Oh, so you get called cool once and now you're the cool dad who hangs out at coffee shops and listens to neo jazz and stuff? Amanda. Are you gonna bring your laptop and your leather brown journal so you can work on your poetry anthology? Look, honey, do you want me to buy you coffee or not? Let me grab my laptop and my leather brown journal. <laughs> Amanda and I make the short walk over to the coffee spoon. The place is quiet today. Just a few people hanging out and reading books in the cozy little nooks. So I'll walk up to the counter and see a familiar Pierce face. Hey, you were the dude I yelled at at a bunch the other night. Aww. Amanda cast a sideways glance at me. He tried to sell me shirts. And who my you be, miss? Hmm. This is my daughter, Amanda. The person I am a father to and very protective of. Honored to make your acquaintance. My name is Pablo. I mentioned that I make witch house music. Hmm. I wouldn't call it witch house music, but okay. Ugh. A piercing blow to my ego, though not one that will dissuade my need to impress you. My innate dad senses tingling. I'm overwhelmed with a fathery protector of energy. I must do something to protect my child. Reappropriate lines from Taken. Change the subject. Anyways, Pablo, I didn't know you worked here. Uh, yeah, man, today's my first day. Matt's still training me. Funk! Matt comes out from washing dishes in the back room to meet Amanda and I. He and I high five as fellow cool people do. Steve so met my newest employee. And it's your service, although I'm only here until vacant fail starts the world tour. When's that? Well, we have to put out a record first. All right, Pablo, now what do we do with customers again? Right, yes. Pablo clears his throat. <clears throat> Hello, good folk of Maple Bay. Can I interest you in a tasty caffeinated beverage? <laughs> Smashing pumpkin spice latte, please. A classic, and you? Hmm, let's have a Father John Misto, please. <sighs> That might be the worst pun I've ever heard. <laughs> hey, it's pure comedy. Yeah, puns are the highest form of comedy. Oh, I was making a joke off. Father John Missy has an album called Pure Comedy, and the drink is named after Father John Missy, so it was, yeah, never mind. Coming right up. Pablo gets to work making our drink while Matt observes him. Oh. He'll get the hang of it. For as goofy of a dude as he is, kid works hard. Hey man, that concert was a lot of fun. We should hang out again. Hell yes. I'm actually going to be done training Pablo in a couple hours and going to go record shopping. Want to come along? Absolutely. Pablo brings us our drinks and Amanda buries herself in her laptop. Spend my time sipping my drink and cracking jokes with Matt. Last time we hung out, he told me I had trouble hanging out with other people, but for some reason, he and I can talk and joke like old buds. It's weird. I feel really comfortable around him. Once Matt feels comfortable leaving Pablo on his own, I say goodbye to Amanda and we start walking to a record store. Have you ever been here before? No, I mean, we have a record player sitting in the living room, but all I have are two copies of Frampton Comes Alive. Hey, yeah. Oh, this should be fun then. We're gonna find you some good stuff. I love going into old record stores because to me, a record store is like a second time, second time around, a really just old secondhand stores. And then there's just so much, so. The walls of the store are packed with posters, artwork, stickers, and records. A few people mill around, flipping through milk crates of albums. Some indie band is playing through the speakers. It's a nice vibe. So, why do people still buy records? Isn't it kind of outdated at this hey. point? There's a lot of people who will try to tell you that vinyl sounds warmer or more true to the artist's intent, but really, I think it's just nice to collect records. Hey. It's cool that in this day and age, we have just about every song ever created available instantaneously on our phones. But there's something about holding an album and getting to see the artwork in your hands that I will always love. That's me with books. <laughs> That's why I try to get as many records that I love in physical form as possible. Remember when we were kids and would have to wait around by the radio with a cassette tape so that we could record our favorite songs? Hey. It made each listen really special. Mixtapes were even cooler because of how much work they took. Now you just make a playlist. I think the last time someone gave me a real mixtape was in high school. Hey. Look around the multi-level record store and spot some genres. Future Wave, Jungle, Anarcho-Punk, Nunsploitation. I have no idea where to even start. Man, this is a little overwhelming. Hey. Here, let me help you find something you might like. If you were a milkshake, what flavor would you be? Strawberry. 
Strawberry. Yeah. If you could only buy one type of candle scent for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh... Sure. What's your favorite ambient sound? Ooh, rain. What's your dream vacation spot? My backyard. What's your deepest, darkest fear? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I worry that people are nice to me only because they want something from me. Hmm. Matt thinks for a moment. Hmm. Huh? Oh, I know just the thing. Matt runs to the other end of the store and returns holding a record behind his back. He shows it to me. This is Evil Friends by Portugal, the man. Danger Mouse came on this album to produce it, and I think it was the perfect blend of what PTM does and what Danger Mouse does. Super fun, super catchy, you will love it. Whoa, dude, thanks for the recommendation. <laughs> You're gonna have a great time with it, promise. And I bring her records to the cash register. A young girl with a septum piercing and a buzz cut stands behind the counter with one earbud in. It was stuff today, Matt. Whoa. Just some light pickups. Matt places three albums on the counter. Swear I'm Good at This by Diet Sig, Forever by Mystery Skulls, and Greatest Hits by Remo Drive. Tight. Hey. Cashier brings Matt up and hands back his albums in a bag. She stares at me suspiciously. Who's the nerd? Hey. The nerd is my buddy Funk. Funk, this beacon of human charm is Molly. Got kicked out of art school for destroying my paintings at the end of every critique. Lovely to meet you. Anyway, Matt, is the open mic night still on? Hey. You know it. Are the third waves going to do a special acoustic performance? I might see if I can get a few of the girls together. <laughs> There's an open mic night going on? Hey, yeah. yeah, dude. We do it every month at the Coffee Spoon. Some amazing talent always comes through. i fly for it right here. You and Amanda should come by that night. <laughs> Matt blushes. I mean, if you're not doing anything. <laughs> Will Vank and Vale be playing? <laughs> if only. I finished paying for my record and we head out to the store. <laughs> Man, what a trip down memory lane. I haven't been at a record store like that since Vans had shag carpeting. Now that you mention it, isn't it strange to think of all those weird little musical memories? How do you mean? Well, I think music is a very time and place sort of thing. A song is important to me not only in that I think it sounds good, but where I was and what I was doing when I listened to it. That's a good point. Like a lot of songs that I used to listen to, I have very strong connections to what I was doing when I first heard it, heard it or when I was first obsessed with it. It's music that reminds me of exes, struggling through school, being so poor that I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. All that stuff. Listening to those songs reminds me of those moments of my life. Yeah, now that I think of it, even the pop concert Amanda made me take to is special to me. I mean, I'm not really a fan of the band, but hearing their songs on the radio reminds me of how young and excited Amanda was. And then that even reminds me of a younger me going to see my favorite bands in concert with all of my friends. We would always go to my friend Cynthia Chapman's house beforehand and smoke pot in her basement like we were all so slick. Her parents definitely knew what we were doing. Wait, when was the last time you smoked pot? I stopped and thinks for a moment. It's been decades. Dude, me too. Where do you even get pot now? Is that even what kids call it these days? Mm. I don't know. Hey. But I bet I can find out. Do you want to get high and listen to our new records? Yeah, why not? Huh. And pulls out his phone and starts texting. In a few moments, he looks up and smiles at me. Ah, uh, Molly's got a hookup. Says to meet in an alley near the coffee shop. Sounds susp. Okay, if it turns out it's the feds, you might you make a break for it and I'll take the heat. Just promise me you'll raise Amanda like she was your own. You. Realize that weed has been legalized in the state, right? I definitely knew that. But we live in dangerous times. Who knows what lurks in the seedy underbelly of Maple Bay? We find ourselves out on the wrong end of a deal gone bad. Just look out for Amanda. I swear. Whoa. What? Here's our guy. Going around the corner of one of those nasty, greasy dumpsters shredded in darkness, his lean figure dressed in all black. Um, excuse me, Mr. Drug Man. Hmm. Surprise, the person almost jumps out of the skin. It's Lucian, Damien's son. Who sent you? What? We're cool, man. We're cool. Says who? For all I know, you could be with the feds. Actually, we just leak. Prove you're cool. What? I need to know that you're down or I bolt. <laughs> Sight mutually assured destruction. Look, man, we're trying to buy drugs from you. We know you sell drugs. You have dirt on us. We have dirt on you. We're in this together now. Look, it's fine. I get it. Let's get Molly said you were coming. Right. Now that formalities are out of the way, let's make a deal. Ugh. All right. How much do you want? One? One what? Hey, dude. Yeah. He means weed, Lucian. Yeah, but how much? Hmm. Oh. 
One. <laughs> oh my god, look, here. Take this and give me ten dollars, just don't tell my dad. Let's all forget this ever happened. I won't tell your dad if you don't. Lucy hands me a baggie of something and disappears down the alleyway. I open it and take a deep whiff. It smells like genuine drugs. Yes, sir. Yeah, that went smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> That was the most awkward thing and completely expected. Yeah, we're talking about weed. How much you want? Yeah, we're talking about weed. <laughs> yeah, we should get a pop of public property before we smoke this. Right idea, let's head back to my place, yeah? Matt and I walk to our cul-de-sac and stop at a gas station on the way to buy rolling papers and soda. I feel like I'm 16 again. Hmm. Carmen Seed is having a sleepover tonight, so that gives us all the time we need to do drugs. Awesome, let's do some drugs. Matt pulls one of the records out of his bag and puts it on for us. I plop down on a comfy leather couch and look around his place. There are a bunch of band posters and his record collection takes up an entire wall. Whoa, what a collection. I've been collecting my whole life. It was nice to finally get them all in one place after being on the road for so much of my life. I had to ask my parents to hold on to them for me. That sits out next to me and we lay the marijuana drugs out on the coffee table. Uh, do you want to do the honors? Please, it's your house. If you say so. Matt pulls out some rolling papers and sprinkles some on the beatnik tobacco onto a pace. Peace. It starts rolling back and forth and the paper breaks almost immediately, spilling drugs all over the couch. Never was too good at this. Matt tries again and is able to successfully roll a nice looking weed cigarette? He hands me a lighter in the blunt, I think, and I take it. Well, let's <laughs> rip that golf fairway. Yes, yes, let's do it. I like the joint and inhale deeply. This is not what I remembered. It's been a while though. Maybe pot drugs just gotten more potent since the last time I smoked. Pass the joint to Matt and cough a little. Should it sting this much, or am I just a baby? Matt takes a hit and his eyes go wide. Mm. That's not weed. Oh god. Oh. Did we develop a taste for meth? No, no, it's... Matt takes another hit and winces. Hey. Yeah, this is oregano. I sniff the air. Yeah, that would definitely explain why it smells like a pizza place in here. Little punk rubbed us off. Oh well, we can still relax and enjoy the music sober. You know what? You're right. Oh. We sit and listen through the Diet Sig album that Matt bought, which is catchy as hell. I look around the room again and see photos of Carmen Cita growing up. It's about a young woman with a huge smile in one of the pictures with the two. Who's that? Oh, man. Oh, that's Rosa. She was Carmen Cita's mother. She died when Carmen Cita was a child. I'm sorry to hear that. Amanda lost Alex at a young age, too. I can understand how hard that must have been. I look around again, spotting a framed gig poster hanging on the wall. On it, there's an illustration of Matt and Rosa surrounded by flowers. The cursive lettering reads, Stillness the Dancing. Looks like they played the Sound Garden uh, over a decade ago. Were you two in a band together? Oh, man. Yeah, that was the reason I was touring so much when I was younger. We traveled the whole country in this rinky-dink little van. It was hard to start, but once we started gaining notoriety and seeing how much our songs meant to kids, it was just incredible. Wow, that seems like a life that some people only dream of. It was, and it was difficult at the same time. I couldn't have done it without someone by my side. Rosa and I knew that we couldn't do it forever. The long hours on the road, missing your family, sleeping in the van, all that stuff. Uh, hey. So once she became pregnant with Carmen Cita, we put down roots in our favorite town to play in, right here. Since she was a kid, Rosa always had a dream to own a quiet little coffee shop. She, um, uh, she died before it opened. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. Don't be. I'm not really sure what to say. I couldn't possibly count the number of times I told people the same thing after Alex died. Hey. I gets up to flip the record. Next to the turntable, I notice a dusty piano. Do you play? Uh, uh I'm out of practice. I used to jam on the keys back in the day. Mm. Oh, yeah? I fronted the hottest seven-piece ska band that England Rock Bay High School had to offer. No way, you had a ska phase? Phase? Ska never dies. Oh. Except for Scommunist Manifesto. We broke up after the senior talent show to pursue solo careers. Oh. Dude, that's so rad. Matt pulls out the piano bench. Hey. 
Give me some of that two-tone love. Oh man, let's see if I still got it. Yeah, yeah. I sit down at the piano. Well, stick to our ska roots. Hey, I think I'm doing it. I'm playing hey, ska. Man. Wait, that was just smoke on the water. Matt, I've forgotten how to play. <laughs> the cheap purple is always appreciated nonetheless. All right, buddy, can you top that? Uh, hey. I, uh, I shouldn't. Oh, come on. No, I'm... It's been a long time. It's never too late to get back into it. Matt, you just sat through a butchered version of Deep Purple's Smoke on the Water. How much worse can it be? That stares at the piano for a second. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I'm, uh... Okay. Matt closes his eyes and runs his fingers over the keys. He breathes in deep and starts playing a mel melody. If I didn't know that he had played the piano a long time, I would never have guessed it. Matt plays a soft, sweet tune filled with emotion. I've never heard this before. Is this one of his original works? This is so cool. <laughs> Matt finished the song and finally opens his eyes. Mm. How was that? That was amazing. Mm. Oh, it's nothing. Come on, man. That was killer. Are you going to pull that out from open mic night? <sighs> oh, no. I never play at those. Oh, shit. Well, why not? You're really good. Hmm. It's just, I just don't do it anymore. I just don't like being up there and alone and having so many people stare at me. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel fun anymore. I can sense that Matt's getting uncomfortable at the thought of it. I won't push him any further. All right, man. I hope you know how beautiful your music is. Uh, Th thanks. Hey. Matt and I sit and listen to more records until it gets late and I decide that I need to get to bed. Matt walks me to my door. Hey. Let's never tell anyone about the oregano. Okay? Deal. Wait, can I tell my doctor? I don't know anything about the health effects of smoking oregano. Hey. And I think we'll be fine. Hey. Night, dude. I smile. Night. I walk inside and the house is dark, save for the sliver of light coming from beneath Amanda's door. Oh. I knock lightly on the door and enter Amanda's room. She's sitting at her desk with her camera, editing photos. Hey! Amanda. Amanda swivels around in a chair to face me and slumps down. Mm. It smells like a pizza parlor in here. What? Nothing. So, what's up? Mm. Dad, I'm hungry. Hey. Wait, no. Hi, hungry. <laughs> no, I'm dead. Amanda collapses on the floor. I promised myself I'd never let it come to this. Sorry, kiddo. You set it up, I spike it down. You're a monster. Want some spaghetti? Yes, please. <laughs> Amanda and I boil pasta and heat up sauce in a pan. Well, I boil pasta and heat up sauce while Amanda watches. Despite my best efforts, I'm not able to set it on fire. Uh. I was record collecting. It was great. Did you know that Matt used to play in a band? No way. Was he good? I don't know if the band was good, but he played some piano for me tonight and it was amazing. <laughs> He played piano for me, for you? Dude. Yeah, I brought it up that he should play at the open mic night that's happening in his coffee shop, but he got kind of weird about it. Hey, I saw a flyer for that. We should go. It's not too late to start a father-daughter punk band and play a couple tunes there. <laughs> yeah, let me break out my glockenspiel. I think I only know hot cross buns, but we can work off the chord progression. <laughs> Man, and I have a nice dinner before she goes back to her room to do photography stuff. I end up watching True Life. I'm a house hunter. They're staging an intervention for the house hunter, who's crying uncontrollably over the color of the walls. They know they can paint the walls of their house any color they want. Right? That song is stuck in my head all night. Date complete! Our total. Never underestimate the power of a dream. <clears throat> a dream, daddy. Eight, 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 eight. Nice. <sighs> well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. Crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. Strained. She 
Sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. See, this gets to the point where it's like, do we push it? Do we leave it alone? Hmm. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Hmm. All right. I will leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Wow, I have no idea what has her so upset. She seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry, but I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would have only made her more upset. And that's the thing, you know, with dating sims like this, it's like you've got like their option and only their options, where it's like, if it were me, I would do something different Personally, like, you know, I'd be like, hey, you know, uh, we don't have to talk about it, you know, type of deal or something else along those lines. But I don't have that option here. I have what they give me. So I can't stop mentally cycling through all the sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle in the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? Uh. No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer-burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms off. Oh. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal the soon. Sit back at the kitchen table and look at picture and a, look at a picture of Amanda hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her to hang, read a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knee, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and was like nothing ever happened. Give me a bit of thought. Aside that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. Start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. So paying for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I want to say sorry about last night. Just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I would, and I get even more scared when I feel like I don't, I can't do anything about it. Dad, I, so just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy, mm. honey. You know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da, Dad. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around Sayed and had to start over and <laughs> this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big ol' hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. I would love spontaneous cake. So it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Uh. <laughs> I guess I should start from the top, so... You know how Amanda R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. The best friend. Yeah. You got it. Well, proud of you. Anyway, 
Ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. <sighs> so, another important piece of information is... Uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah. And, uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. <laughs> I learned from the worst. Oh. Anyway, so the only person I had told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anyone. I didn't confront them about the party thing, because I didn't want to start drama, so I just keep quiet and keep going about my business. Amanda sighs. Then one day, I invite everybody out to get notches at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat notches at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really... Really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. <gasps> so go to the mall anyway. Get to the food cart and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah. All hanging out together and eating nachos. Without me. What? <sighs> it gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R. Which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. <laughs> yes. I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. Grace drops a notch on her shirt because, of course, she does. And Emma just, like, glares at me. Grace. Grace. Nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Gossipy yeah. one? I know! Oh. Grace is the one nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anyway, no one will say anything. I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left. Without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to this shitty day, and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat, asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R, asking how long the Noah's thing's been going on, and... Sorry. No, this is a lot. You still following? What did Emma R say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, an arduously long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. There's so much about a man's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Oh. They were dating in secret for, like, months. They told her that she's been a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was just like, okay. And then she left me on red, and then, wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am. Because she's at least being kind of reasonable. And I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? I said, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but... Honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. Bottom line is that everyone dropped me, half my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Ouch. That hits close to home for me, too. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but... <sighs> Emma R's been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just to suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. As mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected, I almost can't take it. What can I possibly say to help? Oh. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dead. If I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously. I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Honey, 
High school sucks. You make friends with people just because they're there. When you're still living in your hometown, there's a pretty small pool of people to choose from. Once you go to college, once you get out into the real world, you're going to be exposed to all sorts of people, and it's going to be easier to make friends with people who really get you. Some of those friendships can last a lifetime. I mean, look at me and Craig. Some of them only last a little while, and that's okay too. You're going to make so many awesome new friends at art school. Ultimately, I think this is way more about their character than it does about yours because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? <laughs> yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Paps. Yes, huh. thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Daw. <laughs> A doll, and that was a sweet. You've got dads. You've got dads, but this is where we will pick up again on Thursday. So, I hope you all are enjoying our dad ventures. I really am, and I can't wait to see where we will go next in this dad venture, as we continue dating our man. Matt right here. So, until the next time, everybody. A stay funker purple.